No, what will it be? Ooh. Hello, my dear, yes. Today we will be talking about hornets, about those very disliked, very disliked insects shrouded in bad words. And I decided to record such an episode because firstly the Hornet topic is always well viewed and secondly this first episode from Rachel Hoag was surprisingly well received. I was in shock myself, I'm a bit terrified of how well it was received, so I decided that we would visit the Brave Wilderness channel again. An episode featuring the Asian Hornet is coming out today. And again, to keep it from being boring, since it's nice to show something besides the movie, besides the commentary, we have something there. Yes, these are real dead Asian hornets. I will show them to you. Among other things, there is a queen here, even two, including one that is just gigantic, isn't it? These insects are significantly larger than our wasps, correct? That's essentially the gist of it, right? So I guess there's no point in prolonging and we just start the session. I am Kayat Peterson and I am about to enter the sting zone with the Japanese giant hornet. Okay, this is basically the intro, so we can skip it. Absolute searing pain. There are moments we have brought you on the Brave Wilderness Channel that the world will never forget. It's stuck in my arm, it's stuck in my arm. Uh, then there are the moments uh, well, the Executioner Wasp is a membrane, about which I also know that someone wrote to me in the comment to record an episode about this movie, which has already appeared, right? This episode with this genre's device exists already. This is the Polistes carnifex, a wasp native to Central America, particularly Mexico and Costa Rica, and it would be nice to record such an episode, I would very much like to, but I don't have a, a dead specimen of this species. It was once available, but unfortunately it so happens that uh, the main channel of smuggling and distributing interesting insects from various parts of the world and among others just Polistes carnifex were the Russians. Unfortunately, given the current situation, I don't have access to these insects. The genus Polistes has many species, including some found in Poland. Yes, in Poland there are also smaller wasp-like insects that belong to the same family. These cousins of wasps and hornets are known for their painful stings. I suspect that Polish wasps uh, sting less painfully than Polistes carnifex, but okay, let's leave that for another episode. Oh right, the fact that it says Totori Prefecture here gives us some information, or rather it would have once. Why? Because once, um, until around 2020, Asian hornets, or Vespa mandarinia, the species we're talking about here, which is the main character of the episode, was divided into subspecies. Yes, so it was applied. It's probably called trinomial nomenclature. Yes, we have the generic name, uh, species and subspecies. And there were various subspecies. There was the Magnifica subspecies, there was the nominative subspecies, that is mandarinia, and there was, uh, among others, the Japonica subspecies, which occurred in Japan, as the name suggests and at the same time was the largest subspecies. However, along with the year 2020, a pretty cool portable document format appeared, which, to put it nicely, degraded these species to the rank of color varieties. Now, it's just Vespa mandarinia without subspecies, using binomial nomenclature with only the generic and specific name. A mysteriously hidden deep within its fog-covered mountains, it seemed as if an encounter with Japan's most notorious let it fly. And now the comment is that what is shown is the perfect biotope in which it occurs. That is quite, let's say, low mountains, right? The shrike avoids lowlands and very high mountains. Additionally, for example, this is a species that does not like human settlements, right? Sometimes it happens that it will be found near humans, but generally it is a species that prefers storms, prefers vegetation and such isolation from people. Speaking of the Mandarin Duck Island, it practically occupies Asia from the Middle East, through Taiwan, Vietnam, China, of course, Korea, all the way to Japan and so on. It has been present in the United States since 2019. But returning to this occurrence, what is shown here, this kind of forest, thicket, undergrowth, this is its ideal habitat. And there is also something like Vespa analis, it's a cousin of this hornet, another species, which is kind of an enemy of this hornet, in this way, let's say. In contrast, Vespa analis thrives in human habitats, preferring to live in close proximity to people. Uh, it's a, a species 
let's call it urbanized and this biggest one, Vespo mandarinia, well, it's um, a typically forest species. So it's no wonder they were looking for it for some time before they found it at all, because these hornets don't need to be searched for in the bush, right? They build ground nests, so you'd need luck to find one. Did you? Yes, 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 yes. Hold on a second. So they caught it. They caught it. Well, nice. It's biting right through the net. Okay. Here they will be packing it into a container, but I see that they are using exactly the same technique as I do when I catch some insect that could potentially sting me. I catch it in exactly the same way in a container that is in a net. Well, you have to put your hand in there sometimes for use, don't you? Let's rewind here. You see here, I just noticed that this movie contains a factual error. Which one? They labeled this hornet, this insect they caught, as Vespa mandarinia japonica. From what I see, the movie being from 2018 is already a mistake. But someone will say right away, you just said a moment ago that all these subspecies and so on were deregulated, downgraded in 2020, which is two years after the creation of this movie. Yes, that's correct, it's true, but the subspecies Japonica itself disappeared already in 1997, so 21 years before the creation of the movie, which means that the creators simply didn't check and they named this specimen after a subspecies that didn't exist then and doesn't exist now. Oh, now let's get a couple of great B-roll shots and then proceed. No. Okay, now he's going to be filming about that hornet, blah, 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 blah. So now the guy will be praying in front of the device. No wonder. Well, his thrust really is over 0 0.236 inches long. That's true, and here, I don't know if it will show, maybe so, but really this thirst is much longer than, for example, our hornet. Uh, I also read about the mandara toxin. This venom has a neurotoxic effect, if I recall correctly. The sleep must come from here spread out, you know, all right? It's rumored that this insect sting can kill you. Guys, a single sting won't kill me. A to... What he said is important, exactly. That one sting generally won't kill him, right? Unless, for instance, this hornet bit him in the neck and he had an anaphylactic shock, he would be in trouble. But from what I know, for a person to die from these hornet stings, there must be about 60 stings, that's the average. If there are more than about 20 or 30, then you need to go to the hospital and simply get treated there. And what's interesting, even though these hornets are huge, they look terrifying, they look dangerous, their venom is not any more toxic than our hornet's venom. But the problem is that because of their size, they inject a lot more venom, right? For example, the venom of the Vespa Luxuosa is about two and a half times stronger. It is, so to speak, the most venomous in the sense that it has the strongest venom of any hornet or wasp in the world. Okay, let's see what happens. It looks like he'll grab it with tweezers first, as expected. Oh! Mm, all right, he caught it. But, but from this perspective, yeah, you can clearly see and confirm that it is indeed an Asian broad because they have very characteristic large cheeks. And for example, a similar species, the Vespa analis, has much smaller cheeks. And this is a feature that is included in the keys. And you can recognize by this what kind of hornet it is. The One thing that also scares me, there is the chance it's going to latch onto my arm and sting more than once. No. It can sting more than once, because unlike bees, for example, Apis mellifera, our honey bee, well, the hornet's stinger, both hornets and klekanek, and wasps, so there are those types of Vespula, Dolicho Vespula, well, the stinger is smooth, right? It doesn't have barbs, so it can sting multiple times. Well, that's it. Oh, this um, thing's uh, stuck in my... it's still stuck. At all. Oh, uh, I also wanted to mention the tarantula hawk, which I didn't bring up in the previous episode. You see? This wasp didn't fly away immediately, and I think this is my micro theory, that when such an insect stings, it's also in some way, I don't know, a shock for it, that it has to release this venom, right? The bug can't fly away immediately, just like the other bug that didn't fly but ran. It seems to be some kind of unusual state for them. Uh, although I could be wrong, I have no idea, but these insects just don't run away right after stinging, do they? Okay, it's gonna tear here. I would tear too. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. But she has a butt. Ouch. 
Well, it hurt him. I saw him later. He had that hand swollen for quite a long time. Great, we got it. You already know what the sting looked like. It's also worth noting that it's good they probably caught a worker because they don't have stingers, as is the case with all wasps. Male ants lack stingers. Now that we have an idea of what it looks like live, what it is and how, etc., let's take a look at these wonders. Here I have, I mean, I just pulled out five pieces from the collection, and these are two Asian hornet workers from Korea. Uh, there's a queen from Japan, there's our European hornet, also a queen, which I caught once. Well, where is it? Ah, in Wroclaw. Exactly, Wroclaw. And I also have the biggest hornet I've ever had and still have. It's also an Asian hornet. It's also a Vespa mandarinia, a slightly different color form. Besides, this specimen comes from Vietnam and it's gigantic and we can unpack it on camera because I would like to prepare it and it will be much bigger than the other four. So as you can see, we have here a beautiful worker, which is typically black-yellow. I mean more black, maybe orange. It has an orange head, it has spread out yellow parts. And it's big, right? It's about the size of our hornet queen, so that already puts this species higher, that it's bigger. Next we have a huge, enormous queen, which I believe I bought on eBay a while back, and she comes from Japan. Here you can also see that she's quite nicely prepared. She does have some spots on her abdomen, like from oil, and I don't really like that. Besides, you can see that she is a bit differently colored than, for example, the specimen you saw in the video. And this, of course, may indicate that these are two different color forms. But since this is one former subspecies, I would rather assume here that this specimen, as a result of the decay processes that occurred in the dead insect, lost some of its characteristic warning color. Unfortunately, she has a protruding stinger. Not entirely from what I see, but you can see that this stinger is easily about 0.236 inches long. We also have the queen of our hornet, which I managed to hunt down once, and it is simply the largest hornet of this species that occurs here, namely Vespa crabro. It's a marvel, so elegantly packaged that I might even take it out. Yes, by the way, that's how insects come packaged normally, right? When you order them, this is a safe way of packaging, so that the insect simply doesn't get damaged during the journey. So, shall we unpack it, right? Let's see what it looks like and, in quotation marks, what it's eaten with. Alright, let's try to unpack it in a way that doesn't damage the specimen. They are quite robust in construction, but still, right? Nice, now we can gently grab it and take it out. And you saw that this is the same thing he was saying in the movie, that uh, hornets have these claws on their paws with which they can grab quite strongly. That's why, since they are now on cotton, I mean this individual is on cotton, this cotton likes to stick to these claws and if you pull too hard the leg can simply break off. And we wouldn't want that very much. And there it is. Well, I don't know if it impresses you, but it makes a thunderous impression on me, especially since this individual will be a bit bigger, because now it has a contracted abdomen, so it will be a giant, really. Wow, it's an incredibly large, super giant creature. I'm really shocked because I didn't expect it to be so big. Okay, when I prepare it, I'll let you know what it looks like, and we'll compare this individual, this big individual, with the remaining four. We'll check the size difference. For now, the guy who got stung and I say goodbye to you. I hope you enjoyed the video and maybe you'll stay on my channel for longer. Yeah, subscriptions, bells and so on. No, I'm kidding. Take care, my dear. See you and bye. Zing, zing, something's happening. I feel it. With you? Eh, bebe, eh, bebe.